Do you consider becoming a project manager? Then you must have heard that it's a very stressful job. So let's discuss four main factors that put so much pressure on a project manager and how to deal with each one of them. And stay until the end, because I will share several practical techniques that have helped me to keep my sanity on a day-to-day -day basis throughout my whole career. By the end of this video, I hope you will overcome your fears and finally take the necessary steps to become a project manager. So first of all, you make many decisions as a project manager. It puts a lot of responsibility on the outcome of those decisions. But it's even worse than that. You often make decisions that have a delayed impact. For example, you come up with a budget early at the start of a project. It's your best estimate at that time, but you'll be stressed about it through the whole project's lifetime. And there will be dozens of such decisions. Moreover, they will have a compound effect on your confidence. So, how can you deal with it? First of all, you need an excellent understanding of how project management works as a system to overcome this anxiety. And I've got you covered in this area. I'll share a great tutorial with you at the end of this video. But likewise, you need to understand the one crucial thing about project management in the real world. Project management follows the rolling wave. It means that as you gain more knowledge about your project, the more detailed and accurate your project plan becomes. So now the only trick here is that you should not promise anything until you are 100% sure of it. In practice, you should always say, I hope it will be done by, or we expect to finish by the end of the week. So you don't use definitive statements like, I promise it will be done by September. Why? Because you cannot be sure, there are way too many things outside of your control. Here's what's even more critical. Whenever someone doesn't give you enough information or time to perform proper project management activities, you should reserve the right to make changes further down the road. Again, in practice, it should sound like this. Here, at this port, I feel like it's about 20 days of work, but let me check it with the team and I'll confirm the numbers in an email tomorrow, once we finish our analysis. Or if clients don't give you enough time to analyze requirements, you must explain that it's most probably feasible, but it's your own assumption. But again, if you can use, for example, just one day, you'll consult with experts and provide a better analysis. Okay, but what should you do if your clients have unrealistic expectations right from the start, or push you to make decisions on the spot, or your boss demands that you and your team work harder for no reasons? For example, clients may say something classical like this one. I don't care about your estimates, I need this project finished by the end of the month. You can do it, or I'll find someone else who will do it instead of you. So let me address this fear of being fired for not meeting these unrealistic expectations of your clients. First of all, people don't start a project to fail it and blame a random project manager. In most cases, project owners expect to get valuable results from the project. Otherwise, they'll waste a lot of time and money. Also, think about it. Clients need a project done as soon as possible. At the same time, they need about two, maybe five months to hire a new PM, onboard them, take over the project from you, and so on and so on. So it will delay the project even further. However, there is a catch. From a professional standpoint, you should not reject any requests from your client or your boss. Your responsibility is to provide them with the best possible execution plan based on their request. 
And yes, sometimes you'll create a plan just to prove that it's not feasible. Anyway, this constant decision making and pressure from clients and your boss will inevitably lead to imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome, also called perceived freelance, involves feeling of self-doubt and personal incompetence that persists despite your education, experience and accomplishments. In practice, you just start questioning yourself. Do I have what it takes to lead this project? Who am I to lead successful business people and challenge their decisions? Who am I to lead team members with 10 plus years of experience? I want you to think logically here. First of all, someone hired or promoted you to take the role of a project manager. It means they believe that you can handle this project and add some value. Second, same people decided to put a PM on this project for a reason. And it's because they know that no one from the current team members can organize the work. On the other hand, you'll spend 8, maybe 12 hours per day learning project management, while other team members and business people will focus on their own areas of expertise. In a few months, I promise you, you'll be way ahead of everyone else in project management knowledge and skills. And in any case, most project managers don't have formal education, so they will learn the same way as you. So, remember that if you got into the role of a project manager, you already earned that spot. Now you need to take the most out of this opportunity. Ok, so far we have talked only about your mindset and confidence. But once you get into the role, you'll be bombarded with tasks, meetings and documentation. So overwhelm is real in the project manager's role. And with all that pressure, you may feel like you have to work long hours. But can you actually reduce this workload and have a normal work-life balance? And as I promised, let me give you some practical tips that will help you keep your sanity during your first months as a project manager. So first you must apply the big free tasks rule. Every day you must select up to three tasks to move the project further. And you do them before you do anything else. Of course, you can do other things, but only after you have finished or blocked time for all the three big tasks of the day. Second, you must use the time blocking technique. Put everything into your calendar and live by the calendar. Don't allow someone else to overtake your day. I have a video on how to do it exactly. I'll leave you a link below this video. Third. Use Wim Hof's breathing technique daily. At the end of the day, or when you feel too stressed, take 15 minutes to reset your nervous system and calm down. And by the way, you can use this breathing exercise right at the workplace. It's easy and super effective. I've been using it for years. I'll leave you a link in the description as well. And do let me know how it works for you. So use this free productivity techniques to reduce daily overwhelm. Then, if you get a project manager's role, you have my permission to nail the imposter syndrome because you earned that role through the hiring process. Then you learned the most critical communication trick. You don't promise anything unless you have performed proper project management in all its aspects. So, now if you want to become a project manager, you need to learn the basics of project management in advance. Because all employers expect you to bring this fundamental knowledge to your first PM job. That's why you need to watch my full project management tutorial next. It will teach you all the necessary aspects of project management so that you can pass an interview and get the job with confidence. Click the video now, because I'm waiting for you there to continue our conversation.